Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Joshua T. Whaley, and I am the best-selling author of Lost Cannibal Manifesto, amongst many other titles. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm kind of in shock that you found me, as I am shadow banned by the algorithm. Anyway, on this channel, there will be no AI voice reading someone else's words while viewing AI-generated imagery. Instead, what you have is the author reading his own words. If this interests you, then stick around. Anyway, for my returning viewers, you may notice that I am not out on the trails this morning. That's because over the past week, I've been back in my writer's studio. I am closing in on that 150,000 word mark on my latest book titled Forbidden Genesis, The Untold Story of Man. Now with that, I wanted to give you something special this week and read you one of the latest chapters that I wrote. Let's go ahead and begin. Chapter 46, The Hypostasis of the Archons, A Gnostic Tale of Creation. Let us begin our exploration of Gnosticism with the tale of creation unlike any you have heard. We will find quite a bit that mirrors the accepted biblical genesis, but with a few shocking twists and turns along the way that you were not expecting. Anyway, the following tale is known as the Hypostasis of the Archons, which is sometimes referred to as the nature of the rulers. This Gnostic text is believed to have been written sometime in the early 2nd century CE by an unknown author and is possibly based on an even earlier Jewish writing. However, the only surviving copy today is written in Coptic form and from the 4th century, and other than that, little more is known. This work is included in the Nag Hammadi collection and resembles the story in the Apocryphon of John, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, and others in its description of the Archons and the nature of creation. So with that, I have used the 2011 translation by Willis Barnstone and Marvin Meyer from their book The Gnostic Bible along with the 1970 translation by Roger Bullard as the jumping off point to get a newer and more uncomplicated version of the story than the older ones. Anyway, the following is my own interpretation of the story. For the exact translation, please reference the Gnostic Bible or the Nag Hammadi scriptures. The great messenger, inspired by the spirit of the Father of Truth, spoke to us about the authorities of darkness, emphasizing that our struggle is not only against flesh and blood, but against the authorities of the universe and the spirits of wickedness known as the Archons. I am sharing this with you as you asked about the reality of these authorities. With that, their leader is blinded by his power, ignorance, and arrogance, declaring, For I am God, and there is no other God but me. In saying this, he transgressed against the all. This declaration reached that of incorruptibility. And a voice emerged from the incorruptibility, rebuking, You are mistaken, Samuel, the God of the blind. His thoughts then became clouded, and after casting out his power and the blasphemy he had uttered, he pursued it down to chaos in the abyss. His mother, at the urging of Pistis Sophia, she established each of his descendants in accordance with their power and followed the pattern of the higher realms. From the invisible world, the visible world was created. Incorruptibility gazed into the territory of the waters with the intent of uniting all with the light as per the Father's will. But the rulers had another plan, and instead they decided, let us create a human being using soil from the earth. Then, taking the soil from the earth, they fashioned their man to resemble their own bodies and the image of the God they had seen in the waters. However, unlike their creation, these rulers had both male and female bodies and faces resembling beasts. Once the form was made, they said, let us use the form we've created to seize it so it can see its male partner, and we can capture it, not realizing the partner of God due to their lack of power. Next, the chief archon breathed into the creation's face. 
and the man gained a soul, but remained on the ground for many days, unable to rise due to their powerlessness. With all the force they persistently blew, like storm winds, attempting to capture the image they had seen in the waters, unaware of its true power. All of these events occurred according to the will of the Father of all. Later, the Spirit saw the man with a soul on the ground, descended from the Adamathan land, entered him, and he became a living soul. The Spirit named him Adam, for he was found moving upon the ground. A voice from the incorruptibility then came to help Adam. Next, the rulers gathered all the animals of the earth and birds of heaven and brought them to Adam for him to name them. After this, the rulers placed Adam in the garden to cultivate and watch over it. They commanded him, You may eat from every tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat from it or touch it, for if you do, you will surely die. They said this to him without truly understanding, but by the Father's will, so that he might eat, and Adam might not perceive them as a man of purely material nature would. The rulers decided amongst themselves, Let us make Adam fall into a deep sleep. And he slept. The deep sleep they caused is ignorance. When he slept, they opened his side, which was like a living woman, and built it up with flesh in place of her, leaving Adam with only a soul. The woman of spirit approached him and said, Rise, Adam. When he saw her, he said, You have given me life. You will be called mother of the living, for she is my mother, the physician, and the woman who has given birth. The authorities approached Adam and were captivated by his female companion. Observing her speaking with him, they eagerly decided to pursue her, saying, Let us sow our seed in her. However, she laughed at their foolishness and blindness. As they tried to capture her, she transformed into a tree, leaving behind her shadowy reflection, which they defiled. They also defiled the seal of her voice, making themselves liable to condemnation for their actions and the form they had created. Subsequently, a female spiritual presence appeared in the form of a snake. Serving as an instructor, the snake asked, What did he say to you? Did he tell you not to eat from the tree of recognizing good and evil, despite being permitted to eat from every other tree in the garden? The woman replied, Indeed, he not only forbade us from eating it, but from also touching it, warning that if we did, we would surely die. The snake, acting as the instructor, countered, You will not die as a result from eating it. Out of jealousy, he spoke these words to you. Instead, your eyes will be open, and you will become like gods, discerning good and evil. The female instructing power then departed from the snake, leaving it as a mere earthly entity. The woman took from the tree and ate, also giving some to her husband Adam, and they both consumed it. Their lack of knowledge became evident as they realized their spiritual nakedness and covered themselves with fig leaves. The chief ruler arrived and inquired, Adam, where are you? As he did not comprehend the situation. Adam responded, I heard your voice and was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. The ruler questioned, Why did you hide? Is it because you ate from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Adam blamed the woman, saying, The woman you gave me offered me the fruit, and I ate it. The ruler cursed the woman in his arrogance. The woman then defended herself, saying, The snake deceived me, and so I ate. They cursed the snake in its shadowy reflection, unaware that it was a form they had created. Consequently, the curse of the authorities fell upon the snake until the arrival of the perfect human, Yeshua. Adam and his wife were expelled from the garden by the authorities, as they were also under the curse and lacked blessings. Furthermore, the authorities subjected human beings to great distraction and a life of toil to prevent them from being devoted to the Holy Spirit, keeping them occupied with worldly affairs. After that, 
Eve gave birth to Cain, their son, and Cain worked the land. Later he married his wife. Then Eve became pregnant again and gave birth to Abel, who became a shepherd of sheep. Cain then brought produce from his fields, while Abel brought an offering from his lambs. But God favored Abel's offering over Cain's, and in turn did not accept Cain's. Enraged, Cain attacked his brother Abel, killing the younger. God then came and visited Cain, asking him, Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain replied, Am I responsible for my brother? God told Cain, Your brother's blood is crying out to me. You have sinned with your words. Anyone who kills you will suffer sevenfold vengeance, and you will live in distress and fear on the earth. After this, Adam again had relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Seth. With this birth, she said, God has given me another child in place of Abel. Eve then became pregnant again and gave birth to Noria. She said, God has given me a virgin to help many generations of humans. She is the virgin who was not defiled by the powers. After that, humans began to multiply and prosper. The leaders deliberated amongst themselves and proposed, Let us create a flood by our own hands and wipe out all living creatures from humans to animals. However, with the leader of the celestial forces learning their plan, he instructed Noah, build an ark from imperishable wood and take refuge in it with your family, as well as all the birds and animals, small and large, and place it on Mount Sur. Subsequently, Noria approached Noah, seeking to enter the ark. When he refused, she breathed upon the ark and caused it to be engulfed in flames. Nevertheless, Noah constructed the ark once again. After this, the rulers approached her with the intent of leading her astray, claiming that her mother Eve had come to them. Noria responded by rebuking them, declaring them to be the rulers of darkness and cursed. She asserted they did not know her mother and accused them of knowing their own female instead. Noria emphasized that she was not their descendant, but had come from the world above. When the arrogant ruler demanded her servitude, Noria called out to the Holy One, asking to be rescued from the unrighteous rulers. A great angel then descended and questioned Noria's boldness in addressing the Holy Spirit. Noria asked the angel's identity, and the angel revealed himself as Elalith, the great angel sent to save her from the lawless rulers and teach her about her roots. Noria then proclaimed, I am, excuse me, I am unable to describe the power of the angel. He looks like pure gold, and his clothing is as white as snow. I cannot find the words to speak of his power and the appearance of his face. Reading out loud without any jump cuts is very difficult. The great angel Elleth then spoke to me and said, I am understanding. I am one of the four luminaries who stand in the presence of the great invisible spirit. Do you think these rulers have power over you? None of them can overcome the root of truth, for it is because of truth that he has appeared in the final ages, and these authorities will be limited. They cannot defile you and your kind, for your dwelling is in incorruptibility, where the pure spirit dwells, who is superior to the rulers of chaos in their universe. Noria asked, Please teach me about these authorities. How did they come into existence? By what genesis? And out of what material? And who created them and their power? The great angel Elleth, who has understanding, replied, Incorruptibility exists in boundless realms. Sophia, also known as Pistis, created something on her own without her counterpart. And she, what she created was celestial. There is a veil that separates the upper world from the lower realms, and darkness comes into being below the veil. This darkness transformed into matter, and it was separate from the veil. When she had created, took form in matter, like an undeveloped fetus. It took on a shape made of darkness, and became a proud beast resembling a lion. 
It was both male and female, as I had mentioned, because it originated from matter. Upon opening its eyes, it saw a vast amount of endless material and became arrogant, proclaiming, I am God, and there is no other God but me. When it said this, it committed a sin against all. A voice came from above the realm of absolute power, saying, You are mistaken, Samuel, which means God of the blind. And it said, If there is anything else that exists before me, let it reveal itself to me. Immediately, Sophia pointed her finger and brought light into matter, and she followed it down to the region of chaos. Then she returned to her light. Once again, the darkness reverted to mere matter. This ruler, being both male and female, established a vast realm, an infinite domain. It considered creating offspring for itself, and it produced seven offspring who were also both male and female like their parents. It said to its offspring, I am the God of all. Zoe, the daughter of Pistis Sophia, cried out, saying to it, You are mistaken, Sakla, also known as Yaldabaoth. She breathed into its face, and her breath became a fiery angel for her. And the angel bound Yaldabaoth and hurled it down into Tartarus at the depths of the abyss. When its offspring, Sabioth, witnessed the power of the angel, it regretted and denounced its parent and the matter from which it came. It despised its parent, but it praised Sophia and her daughter Zoe. Sophia and Zoe found it and placed it in charge of the seventh heaven, below the veil, between the upper and lower realms. It is called God of the Forces Sabioth, because it is above the forces of chaos, as Sophia positioned it there. After these events unfolded, he constructed a giant chariot adorned with cherubim, harp, and lyres, and countless angels to serve his attendants. Sophia brought her daughter Zoe to sit at his right side, instructing him about the entities present in the eighth heaven while placing the angel of wrath at his left. Since then, his right side has been associated with life, and his left side has represented the injustice of the realm of supreme authority above. This all occurred before your time. When Yaldabaoth beheld him in his magnificent splendor and height, he became envious, and this envy transformed into something androgynous, thus making the origin of envy. From this envy, death was born, and death gave rise to offspring each of whom was assigned to govern its own heaven. The chaotic heavens became filled with their countless hosts. Yet it was by the will of the Father of all that they all came into existence, following the pattern of everything above, so that the totality of chaos could be achieved. In this way, I have imparted to you knowledge about the structure of the rulers, the substance through which it was made visible, as well as their parent and their universe. Noria asked, Sir, am I also created from the same substance as them? He replied, You and your descendants from the, come from the original father, meaning all of us humans. Your souls originate from above, from the uncorrupted light. Therefore, the rulers cannot control them because the spirits of truth resides in them. Those who understand this existence are immortal among mortals. However, their descendants will not be revealed at this time. Instead, it will be known and liberated from these rulers' deception after three generations. Noria inquired, Sir, how much longer? He answered, Until the moment when the true human, Yeshua, in a physical form, reveals the presence of the Spirit of Truth sent by the Father. Then He, Yeshua, will instruct them in all things and anoint them with the eternal life-giving received from the generation without a king. Then they will be free from arrogant thoughts and will conquer the death that originated from the rulers. They will ascend to the boundless light where this lineage begins. Then 
The rulers will abandon their errors. Their angels will mourn their destruction. And their demons will lament their demise. Then all of the children of the light will truly comprehend the truth, their origin, the Father of all, and the Holy Spirit. With one voice they will declare the truth of the Father is righteous, and the offspring rules over all. And from everyone throughout the ages, holy, 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 amen. Wow, what a story. That was a little difficult to read out loud. I'm not really a public speaker. I'm a writer, as I've said in previous videos. You put a keyboard underneath my fingertips or give me a pen, and I'll try to create something special for you. But reading out loud, that's not my bag, baby, as Austin Powers would say. Anyway, now the housekeeping. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am working on a new book titled For Ben Genesis, The Untold Story of Man, which I'm hoping to finish this winter. As I am in the Pacific Northwest, the rain's about to come and you don't go outside on the trails during that. Anyway, if you like what I'm trying to do here, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you really want to help support me, there are links down below to my books. They are available on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble. But as I always say, I'll talk to you again soon. I love you all. Bye.